Hello, my name is Curtis Piditus. I am an actor, writer, director, musician, and a playwright. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about body language and how we use body language in the performing arts. I'd like to thank the Saskatchewan Library Association for engaging me and allowing me to be a part of this great little series for you. So, talking a little bit about body language today, I'd like to first introduce myself in my language as I usually do. Danse ga hiao, Curtis Piditus and Siega Sun, Egua Niah o Chesi Sip Sagaiganik, Gamskawe Sit Egua Ogamasis Askiganak. My name is Curtis Piditus. I am from the Duck Lake area. Beardies and Okamasis is my home community. Introducing myself in my language is always the foundation of who I am. I call it the first story. When I am out talking with people, youth, children, adults, elders, I talk about the importance of the first story. I'm not talking about the creation story. I'm not talking about the story of God, Jesus, creation in general. We have those stories. They're very important. The first story is about who you are. My name is Curtis Piditus. Today I am holding a rock that I'm going to be talking about in a little second. I'm going to place it on the ground here. Right now, I'd like to talk a little bit about my medallion. This medallion is very, very integral to my first story. As you can see, I am holding a bear paw. This medallion was made by my grandmother, and in Cree, we say Nukkum, my grandmother. My last name is Piditus, but it is not a Cree word or a Cree name. Piditus comes from bear paws in French. Pat dus, pardon my French. I am not the best, but it comes from there. If you go to the superstore, to your local supermarket, and you see the bear paw cookies, turn it around and you will see the letters P-A-T-T-E-S, D apostrophe H-O-U-R-S, Pat Deus. And so what that suggests to me in my first story is that when the treaty agents came to Saskatchewan, to Treaty 6, and took names of all the families, they were talking to all of the people and said, we want to get this name of this next family. But nobody in my family was probably present at the time. Although we did have relations, friends, networks from the Francophone community, and I imagine they had said, hey, we know who they are. Those family are our friends. They call themselves bear paws in their language. We don't know how to pronounce that in Cree. So we say Pat Deus. I imagine the treaty agent said, okay, Piditus, next. What's in a name? So re with regards to my first story, that's what this medallion speaks to very much. My identity, my foundation, my culture, my language, and my history. So when I talk about the first story, that is what I am talking about because it lays the foundation for who we are, our identity. Thank you. Moving right along, as I said before, I have a rock. This beautiful rock, we say Asani in Cree. This beautiful Asani, I call my story keeper. It was gifted to me by Joseph Natauhau from Sturgeon Lake First Nation, who had come out to a storytelling event that I was coordinating at the time. After my presentation, Joseph approached me with tobacco, a cloth, and this beautiful rock, and says, I am now protocoling you as a storyteller. So for me, this rock travels with me everywhere I go. I share it in circles with people. We pass it around, we share our stories, we share our emotions, we share laughs, we share victories, successes, and challenges. This rock is a story keeper. It hangs on to so much story, emotion, power, love, courage. It's all within this rock. And I keep this rock for myself so that I am always reminded as a storyteller that I'm also a story keeper. And the heart of who we are comes from stories. So this is very much important to me. And when it is my time, I will be passing this rock on to another storyteller. So in the meantime, it stays with me, it stays with us, and it keeps the stories of the people that I've been with. So I've talked a little bit about that first story. I talked a little bit about stories. I talked a little about who I am. When we are talking about performance, we should keep in mind 
circles. Everything that I'm going to talk to you today will be something that has been shared with me, that has been passed on to me, and has also come from my own curiosity and my own observations. So today I will be sharing, I will be passing on, and I will also make observances and observations for you today. Let's start with our place and space. So ladies and gentlemen, when we are in place and space, be it wherever we are, the classroom, a courtroom, we could be here on the land, we could be an actor on stage, we could be an MC at a wedding. We are always in place and space. And we've been given two tools that allow us to be in place and space. The first tool is your voice. When it comes to voice, voice speaks. We all speak. Language, sound, inflection, enunciation, projection. These are all part of who we are in voice. But before we even talk about voice, let's talk about air. One of the first of the four sacred elements, earth, air, water, and fire, when we talk about air, we talk about the importance of breath. Breath is what is necessary to give us voice. When we were all born from our mother's wombs, the doctor may have grabbed us. I know he grabbed me, as I'm told. I wasn't breathing. I wasn't making a sound. He turned me around, gave me a spank on the bum. And I was like, and what happened? I didn't cry. I took a breath. Uh, and that first sound was drawn from the first breath. Boom, spank. Uh, and the first cry. So air in that expression is very, very important for us. Air is very important. And when we're talking about air and breathing, we have different places in which we breathe. One place in which we breathe is our lungs. I myself am a marathon runner. I like to run, 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 run anywhere and everywhere I can, especially around here, beautiful Saskatoon. And so my air comes from my lungs. That's where the air comes from. It's in the lungs. I'm also a singer. And as singers, we breathe into our diaphragm. And it's the midpoint here. And it is bringing the air into the soft palate, the roof of your mouth. Feeling that cool air hit the roof of your mouth. <gasps> that gets right into the diaphragm. <gasps> Happy birthday to you. Getting that air into the diaphragm is what very necessary for singers. <gasps> the third place in which we breathe. Speakers. Actors. Into the gut. Into the stomach. So when we do, we're turning our stomach into a balloon. <sighs> and it's like a... Ooh, sound going in. Ooh. That breath into the gut allows power. So if you take a moment to just breathe into your stomach, you could feel the air into your stomach much like a balloon. Give that a try. Take some observation from that and feel that in your body. It, the air passes your lungs and your diaphragm. <gasps> and as guest speakers, MCs, actors, we need the power from here to speak and to project. I've been in rooms with 500, 600, 700 people and no microphone. Our director telling us you will need to project today. And looking at my fellow actors with big eyes going, Okay, here's why we took acting classes. <gasps> Ooh, breath. Very, very important in that respect. <sighs> so just try that again. Just a couple of nice breaths for yourself. <sighs> Breathe into the diaphragm. <sighs> and into the lungs. <gasps> just feeling air, passage, breath. And what will happen as you are breathing is you might feel a little lightheaded. Whoa. Whoa, ho, ho. You might feel a burp. Burp come out. 
or heaven forbid you might pass gas it happens because what we're doing is we're playing with our respiratory system we're taking air in and out when a person yawns oh it's the most contagious thing in the world don't yawn in a theater but when we yawn oh, our air is balancing itself out in our bodies we're not bored we're not tired we're exhausted maybe the body needs that air within and so that yawn is bringing air into your body and balancing you're balancing air so that's what yawns do for us is they make air back into our body in a nice balanced way so we're breathing again and that's the one thing that we do not do properly is breath we are always holding our breath in when we're nervous when we're scared when we're tired and so air is going to give you what you need to use your voice. Other practices we have in the world of theater are more about enunciation, working with consonants, ba 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 sa 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 da 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 and sounds getting your mouth used to making these sounds also working the muscles within your mouth the tongue muscle rotating within and waking up the muscles within so that when you are using your voice not only are you being heard but you are being heard clearly and speaking very clearly and using your words and owning your words with power Another thing that I want to talk about is pitch, P I T C H, and it is when our voices go up and down in sound. Ooh. Ooh. So I want to introduce two elements. One, we will be going from low to high. We will start here, ah, oh, and we will go to now, for the ladies, this will be a little bit easier because we have naturally high-pitched voices. For the men, this will be a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to count to three, follow my hand, and we will go, ah, okay? All together now, nice deep breath. One, two, three. Ah. Whoa, crazy. I just hit a bunch of notes. Oh, I went to a whole octave of notes. Wow. We're going to go the opposite way now. This will be a little bit more challenging for the ladies and a little bit easier for the men. We're going to go from high to low. Nice deep breath. One, two, three. Oh. Oh that was interesting let's do it again one two three <gasps> that is so weird i've seen a lot of movies where you see actors talk show hosts backstage doing their thing and what we are doing is waking up our voices using the muscle, using air, using the muscles within our mouth to make our voices come to life. Because nobody, nobody speaks like this on stage. If we did, it would be quite a boring world. We always speak, we use our voices, we lift words off the page when we read as actors, we bring everything to life. It's like when your friend tells you something so interesting, you don't go, Oh, when someone tells you something interesting, you go, oh, and that's how we speak to each other using our voices, projection. We use consonants. We use enunciation. We use it all in our voices. So think about those. You can find anything everywhere on YouTube in terms of practicing your voice, vocal warm ups. They're everywhere. I, I, I really encourage you to go look for them. They're everywhere. Thank you very much. We're going to move on in a minute to talk a little bit about body language. Okay, body language. Body language is an amazing thing. 
It's something we don't think about, yet we are experiencing each and every day. Every second of our lives, we're experiencing body language. Our bodies speak in so many ways, we are often not aware of it. So today, I think I'm more interested, not in teaching body language, but talking about it, creating awareness of our bodies, and hopefully inspiring some thought on how we can carry ourselves in different spaces and places. So when it comes to body language, I talk first and foremost about place and space. Wherever you are, at home, in the classroom, in the car, in the park, we take place and space. So imagine where I am right now, I am sharing a circle with other bodies. There's someone here, 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 and here. Imagine yourself in this space, wherever you are, at home, in the class, on the land. Imagine yourself in a circle. We all know what that's like. Within a circle, we're all equal. We see each other equally. Nobody is hidden. Nobody is above. Nobody is forward. We are all equal in the circle. Where it becomes a little bit more interesting in that circle, because it's a nice, safe, communal space, is when you take those steps forward into the center of the circle. <gasps> oh my goodness. Everybody can see me now. Oh my goodness. I can't hide as I could when I was in the circle. Oh no, people are going to look at me and judge me. It is a very vulnerable and scary place for a lot of us, being in the center of that circle. And we take this space each and every day when we speak with our friends and family, when we are doing that presentation in the classroom, when you are a guest speaker, when you are an MC at the wedding, when you are a teacher in the classroom. We take this place and space each and every day. And if we can create an awareness of it, we can get away from this space and place because what it can do for us, it can mislead us. A lot of people, when you take that center space and there are people around you, some of us have a tendency to take that on in a very <clears throat> egotistical way. They're going, oh yeah, I'm the center of the universe now, baby. Look at me, everybody. This is me. I own center universe. Oh, that can be a very, very dangerous thought because in this place and space, in the center, we have other things that occupy. One, in the sweat lodge, we have a pit that is dug in the earth and the rocks, specific rocks are brought in to that pit. So that pit represents the grandfather rocks and the sacred space. When you go to a powwow, there is a center pole in the arbor that all the dancers are dancing around and they're moving in a clockwise motion. There is a dance at the powwow, the traditional men's dance, where the men are waiting for a specific hit and part in the song. And when the traditional men are dancing and they hear that, they're dancing wherever they are and they hear that, boom, you'll see all the men gravitate towards center pole and give it a symbol of representation or sign of respect to the creator for that center. So that's very powerful in its own right. In the sun dance for indigenous people, there is that center pole as well. And in some sun dances, we tie sinew to ourselves and bone and pierce ourselves and we sacrifice. We could sacrifice for so many reasons. Maybe my family had made it through a very tough winter and so I vowed to dance the next summer. So in that respect, that center space is very sacred. And that's exactly what my mentor told me the very first time I took center stage. And I said, hey, I'm Curtis. Watch out. Watch out, Lauren Cardinal from Corner Gas. Watch out, Adam Beach, Suicide Squad. Curtis is here. And yet, I didn't realize the sacredness of the space, the love, the courage, the wisdom, the honesty, humility, that need to go into the space and place and the respect that needs to be given. Because when we are here, we have so much power. We speak 
when we are taking this place, not only with our voices, but with our bodies. And so when it comes to body language, I want to introduce what was shared with me as the neutral state. The neutral state, I kind of understand it as a car. You turn a car on, boom, 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 boom. it's in park. You put it into neutral, the car is alive. It's not moving forward, not moving back or sideways. It's not moving at all, but it is alive and it is there. So the neutral state for us, wherever you are, if you can take a stance, we want to have our feet shoulder length apart. We want to have our knees not locked, just slightly bent a little bit. Our feet straight, not this way, not this way, but straight. Within your hips, we don't want to be sticking it out because sometimes we do that. Hey, we're like looking around. Everybody look at me. No, no, no. We're going to keep it straight. Within here, the gut, nice and straight. We want to be standing nice and tall and straight. Shoulders, not up like this, but relaxed. Your hands and your arms down at your sides. We want to think there's a string pulling the top of our head like this. This is the neutral state. And as you find this position, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to find a space, stare straight ahead, whether it's on the wall, you're looking at a tree, you're seeing a dot. I want you to find one spot and stare straight ahead into it, finding this neutral position. And you're gonna breathe Miyagi style, in the nose, out the mouth. If you remember Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid, he always said, Daniel son, breathe in the nose, out the mouth. Okay, so we're going to stand for one minute approximately, and we are just going to breathe together in neutral space. In five, four, three, two, one. and let it go. That was approximately one minute. I know that because by my own breath, when I breathe five times, that's approximately 30 seconds. So I took 10 breaths that time. I think I was in and around a minute. But a couple of observations about that. When we are in our own space and place, in neutral as we were for that one minute, a couple of things can happen. Your shoulder can move. Ugh. Your foot might tingle. Oh, stay still. Your hand might, might kind of move a little bit and you're like, oh, come on, come on. Just one minute. It took me three months to be able to do this within three minutes. A three minute exercise. It took me three months to be able to be here in this place and space, in neutral. It's crazy. It is like, Meditation with your eyes open and trying not to be distracted by noises, birds, the sun, the temperature on your body. Neutral is a very, very difficult practice. Why? Because we never do neutral. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, Ah, oh, all right, well, I guess I'm going to stand in neutral. Nobody does that. So the observation, the takeaway from neutral is that when we are not in neutral, our bodies are speaking. So let's take neutral. 
as best you can. Take a couple of breaths. Put your hand on your hip. Tilt your hip. Boom. Attitude. I want you to raise your hand. And we're just going to walk around the space with this expression. Try to find something in your body that allows you comfortably to have this walk with this stance. Okay? Just walk around a little bit if you can or observe what's, what my body is doing. And what kind of body language is that? You can make your own choices, but the body language in that can be, maybe I'm attitude here, maybe I'm holding a cup here, and I have my pinky finger out, and I'm sipping tea. And I have all this attitude, right? So body in that expression says something. <clears throat> back to neutral. Let's go back to neutral now. As best you can, take a couple of breaths. Now I'm going to get you to push your neck just a little bit forward. I'm going to get you to arch your back at the top comfortably. Bend your knees down. Get your arms up a little bit like this. And you're just going to be grandpa. Grandpa walking around in the middle of the night. Going for a drink of water in the kitchen. And grandpa moves slowly because he's tired. Grandpa used to be an athlete, a super athlete, and now his body has taken a lot of bumps and bruises. So this is Grandpa. All right, just walk around like Grandpa. Or Grandma, that is fine. Grandma's good too. She's wonderful. And come back to your space as Grandpa. And just let that go. <sighs> Bodies, body language. We speak body language often when we speak to each other. Sometimes we'll be guarded. If someone's telling us something that's a little sensitive, we could get a little guarded. What if somebody is telling you, you know what, I love you, my friend, but yesterday you hurt me when you made that joke. Guard, a little bit of a guard. Okay, I hear you. I'm uncomfortable, but I hear you. I'm just a little bit guarded. Or when we are cold, we shake, we shiver. We're trying to get warm. Right? This is what our body language is doing. What about when we are hot? Oh. Whew. That heat is really blasting me. Whew. Thinking about body language, what our bodies do. Taking space and place. I created a piece called Immemorial. And you can find it on YouTube. It is called A Story Without Words. Immemorial is an exploration of Indigenous and Canadian relations in Canada from pre-contact to the present. It's an eight and a half minute piece. It's a non-verbal storytelling piece. And within that piece, I've actually drawn from some of the MIME workshops I've taken. Frank Engel comes to mind. Uh, Kenneth Charlette in sound design. And uh, Jeff Chief, who designed some of the costume work for that particular piece. Uh, have a look at it on Immemorial, because, um, on YouTube, I should say, because it speaks very much to what I'm talking about today in terms of body language and how we use body to tell story. So within that piece, I have some expressions. One expression is bird, like this, with your wings out and your hands tilted up to make it look like wings, on your tippy toes with small steps, to give the impression of flight. Give this a try if you like. This is flight. Tall, small baby steps. And standing tall. Emulation of flight. And then when the eagle lands, okay. So you'll see that within the piece in Memorial. I use the expression of hunting. within the piece. So I utilize the bow and arrow symbol to tell the story of hunting, to tell the story of offering to the creator, of dance, of conflict, of pain, and of strength and finding 
within. So take a look at the Peace Immemorial on YouTube and uh, feel free to comment or send me any emails, questions about that particular piece. Moving back on to the neutral position. Finding neutral again, ladies and gentlemen, from where you are. Couple of breaths. Back into neutral as best as you can. Let's try the bird. Wings out, hands up, onto your toes, standing tall, and just walking around with baby steps and feeling that in your body, feeling that. Okay. And then once you get to this position, let's do eagle land, wings, crouch down and arms to the shoulders. For eagle flight. That's eagle flight. So creating awareness of our bodies in that place in space. What we do with our bodies, how they speak. When we are not in this neutral position, our bodies are speaking all the time. We're always speaking. If we can create a stronger awareness of our own bodies, when we are teacher, when we are MC, when we are guest speaker, when we are in the courtroom, not only are our voices being heard to tell stories, to share, to guide, to provide information, but our bodies are doing it as well. It's the second voice that we have and we speak with our bodies in multiple ways. So for today, I want to create that awareness for you of body language, of body, of the neutral position, but also creating place and space understanding our place in space inside that circle and why this place in space is very important. From an indigenous point of view, it's a very sacred space, that center. What does that center mean for you? Other than, look at me, here I am, this is all about me. Place in space is so important to who we are. And when we have that awareness of our own place in space, wherever we go, we are carrying ourselves with confidence because we have a strong awareness of our own bodies. We have a strong awareness of our own voices. But most importantly too, we are connected to that first story. Who am I? Where am I from? Who are the people in my family? Who are the people in my first circles? Friends, acquaintances, strangers. And how am I carrying myself when I walk into these places and spaces? How do I understand that? And what is my story? What is my voice saying? What is my voice and my body speaking? Awareness. Today is all about creating awareness, conversation, visiting. And I hope that today that anything I've shared, anything I've provided, anything I've observed or been curious about can have you take something away as it has for me when I've taken uh, little sessions with friends and mentors and families and even in visits with friends and families as well. If there's something to take for, for this, from this, for you, then I, I feel really good about that. Again, place and space, voice and body language. These are just the foundational elements of what I do as a playwright, an actor, a director, and a musician. So I hope today that they were, able, they were helpful for you. And uh, I want to thank you again and SLA for allowing me to be a part of this little session. And we have beautiful land here. So I encourage you to get out there, people. Go enjoy. Go be with family and friends. Have love and peace. Thank you very much.